Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be talking about some tips and strategies that helped me during the interview prep session. As we all know, interview prep is one of the hardest parts of getting a job as a software engineer. There is so much to learn, many things unrelated to what you actually do day to day. And it honestly feels like you're studying for a really important test when you're doing interview prep. But today I'm here to share five tips that really helped me during the process. I'm no algo expert, but I do know a thing or two about having a very successful interview prep session. So I'm hoping that these tips help you out during this process of preparing for job interviews. So this video is gonna be mostly about prepping for technical interviews. And when I say technical interviews, I'm not talking about system design questions. I'm talking specifically about data structures and algorithms, coding questions that you'll see during the phone screen during your on-site and even during the pre-interview stage of doing like a hacker rank coding test. So without further ado, let's hop right into it. The foundation of prepping for the coding exam is always gonna start with data structures and algorithms. But what really helped me this time around doing the interview prep process was taking the time to study patterns and strategies to solve questions. Some people, after doing a lot of practice questions, a lot of lead code questions, might find they start to notice different patterns. The truth is that with these coding interview questions, there are like 10 to 14 strategies that can be applied to most of them. And these strategies can help you figure out what is the best way to solve the different coding questions that you might get. So for example, if you get a question like this and you see the term top K, you know for questions like top K, the best data structure to solve this is a heap. Or for certain problems, you might notice that the best way to solve this is by using the fast and slow pointer or by using the sliding window. There are these different strategies and these different patterns that you'll notice as you're doing more interview prep. What I recommend is just go straight to the patterns and try to memorize them and learn them. This was probably one of the most important things that helped me during the interview process was just after having a very good piece of data structures and algorithms, taking the time to study these patterns and learn these 10 to 14 patterns. So when I was doing this process, I actually was very extra about this and decided to take a course. I took this educative course that went through the very common coding patterns that you might see during the interview process. But I feel like you don't really need to purchase a course. There are a lot of free resources online. There are these different articles that show you the different patterns that are very common and as well as questions that help you practice those different patterns. So the next tip that really helped me a lot and this tip is like a big deal is doing as many mock interviews as possible. Mock interviewing is the best way to help relieve test or interview anxiety and to give you a lot more confidence when you're doing the interview process. For me, doing mock interviews was like so critical. When I was doing test prep, I did mock interviews like real life whiteboarding interviews with other developers. I've done like online mock interviews to practice like the phone screen process, which I've done through websites like interviewing.io and pramp.com. Those websites are really great for doing these like practice sessions. Another thing you can do if you maybe pramp the calendar is full or you don't have that many friends to do interview prep with is to actually do it by yourself. There are different features on LeetCode where you can do timed practice. So time yourself and record yourself and go through each question like you would do if there was an interviewer in front of you. Start first by saying the question out loud, asking clarifying questions, even if you've already seen the problem ask those clarifying questions, then give the worst case scenario solution before hopping into explaining the best case scenario solution. Just by taking as many chances as you can take to do real life examples, that will really help you during the process. And you'll find that, wow, I feel a lot more confident. I have a lot less anxiety because I've done all of these mock interviews and I've done all these prep sessions. So the third tip that helped me during the process was really looking at very targeted and curated lists. If you've noticed on Leak Code and on like Cracking the Coding interview and even Elements of the Programming interview, all those interview books have so many questions. Like you could potentially do all of them front to back. But what I've noticed during the interview process is that there are some questions that you're more likely to get over other questions. Like there are some questions I've gotten very frequently during the interview process. There are a lot of these lists, like Leak Code has a filter that you can do the top K most frequent interview questions. Another thing that helped me was actually using this list by 
uh, Team Blind. And that website, there was this really helpful list that was like the top 75 interview questions that this person has gotten frequently. I found that that list was very good and helped me have like a targeted list to finish when I was doing interview prep process. Another tip I'd recommend if you have companies that you're specifically targeting is to go on Glassdoor or even like the Lead Code Forms page. What I've noticed is that interviewers tend to ask the same question to everyone. And there was a company I was applying for and that company, like all their questions were on Glassdoor. They didn't even try to like change it up for the past four years. They just asked the same question, which was all on Glassdoor. And I did very well during that interview because all the questions were on Glassdoor. So make sure that you try to find as curated of a list as you could possibly find. Another thing that helped me during the interview process was programming all my questions in Python versus Java. The first time around of interviewing, I programmed in Java and you know, Java, it's very verbose. You got the brackets, you got the semicolons, you got a lot of things in Java that make it very verbose. By switching to Python, it was a lot more concise. I could go through things really quickly. Also got to take advantage of a lot of the built-in functionality that Python has. So I would recommend if you're doing the interview process to really consider switching to Python. But if you're someone who's never touched Python and you have no interest in learning Python at all, then definitely just use the language that you're most comfortable with. So my final tip, which is the most important tip in this list of tips is to prioritize your mental health. Guys, your mental health is number one. You can't do anything unless you have good mental health and you feel good about yourself. The interview process is not worth killing yourself over or dying over. If you don't get into Google, you will be okay. The most important thing though, is that you have good mental health. You feel happy, you feel good about yourself. You are not burned out before you even start a job. So that's why I would recommend really prioritizing your mental health during the process. The thing that helped me specifically during the interview process for prioritizing my health was a couple things. The first thing was I did not have a goal company. I did not have a goal outcome. I fucked myself over a couple times by having very specific expectations of the interview process. This time around, I went in very open-minded. Whatever comes, comes, you know? That's, that was my mood and my vibe. I'm gonna do my best during the study process, but whatever comes, comes. The second thing that helped me was sticking to a very manageable and realistic study schedule. I could have studied six hours every day after work and hated my life and not had any time to see my friends, but I decided to stick to a more reasonable, realistic schedule of like two hours every day. This was way easier to manage and I felt proud that I was able to commit to that interview schedule and I was able to also have a social life. The third thing I would definitely recommend is realizing that there is a lot of luck in the process. As hard as you try, you might still get an interviewer that doesn't want you to succeed or you might get a question that is just so difficult, whereas your friend gets very easy questions. You just don't know what's gonna happen during the process. So just realize that there are a lot of things out of your control. One thing you can control is just working as hard as you possibly can, but you can't control a lot of things during the interview process. And that's something that's very important to know. And the final thing that helped me during the process was really making times for my hobbies, for the people I loved, for the things I loved doing. So I did not make interview prep my entire life. I made sure to take time to see my friends, to do my different hobbies, and just to like have a generally a good life and not throw my entire life into the interview prep process. And if you're looking for new hobbies during the process, definitely would recommend that you check out Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning platform that you can use to develop new hobbies or to learn new skills if you're interested. I'm actually taking this really cool Skillshare course about digital illustration by Lacey Jordan. And it's been a really fun way to just do something fun outside of my day-to-day -day job and outside of my YouTube channel, which is also a creative outlet for me. The first thousand people to use my Skillshare link in the description box will get a free trial of Skillshare premium membership. And after that, it's only around $10 a month. So I hope this video was helpful. I hope these five tips helped you. I will leave, of course, chapters in this video and links of resources down below. Thank you guys so much for watching this video and I will see you guys next time.